all intelligent. We might have heard this concept before, right, with epigenetics, and that's awesome. But what you're going to discover in this is really how the battle that we're, we have to have um, with changing these genetic expressions. And I, I, will, I will teach you all about that in a second because it's absolutely mind-blowing how much these things affect us. Welcome to the Mindset by Design podcast with your host and NLP expert, Andy Murphy, where you will learn the tips, tricks, and strategies he teaches his world-class clients to give you the skills to dominate any business. What's going on, Mindset by Design crew, and welcome to episode 420. Hope you're amazing as always, and life is treating you pretty damn awesome. I really do. Um, do you know what? If the sound quality is a little off today, hey, I'm traveling. I just got back to the US. I've been in the UK. I've been over here, been over there. You know the drill, especially if you're a regular listener. And do you know what? I really hope you are by this stage. I, I also appreciate that today's episode is 420. <laughs> For all you smokers out there, 420 is a good number. And speaking of a good number, I'm really hoping that you've enjoyed the last few episodes, you know? I missed last week, first time in a long time, I haven't done an episode, and I get it, again, transition, setting up, and that's why the sound might be a little off, because I haven't got my awesome normal microphone. But last week's episode, or I should say last episode, 419, was really, really cool, and I hope that you really went and listened to it, because it was 21 codes by the greatest samurai about living an incredible life, and that sounds, well, what the heck does that mean, Andy? Well, it's Miyamoto Masashi. He was the greatest samurai with over 60 combat lessons. The Book of Five Rings, you might have heard about it. Listen, go and listen to that episode. It's a beast. And the one before that was Andrew Huberman, The Third I Lie and Meditation Science. Now, I call it a third I lie just because it sounds cool. Um, but there's definitely truth to it, but there's definitely some... Mm, non-neuroscience truth to it. So definitely check that episode out. So today's episode, what the heck is this one about? You're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's actually, I'm following on on my series, Unlocking Your Mind. If you haven't noticed, episode 416, 415, all about unlocking your mind. Actually, 417 too. And that was Unlocking Your Mind part three. So we're going to do number four today. And this is about all my, the NLP, the behavioral psychology. It's actually sharing more about my work. And one of the um, trainings that I'm going to give you a clip from is week six on the top 1% performer, which is a badass 12 week system that I developed a long time ago. And um, I think you're going to love it. I, I, I really do. We talk about some cool stuff. Again, that little clip at the start was all about epigenetics, but we go into a lot of other cool things. Again, it's a clip from a monster multi-hour every single week, 12, 12 weeks in a row. But again, I just want to give you some actual practical tools because lots of these episodes, I'm breaking down other people's clips. But if you rewind all the way to 200, or actually say we're on 400, aren't we? So if you go to 300, we got lots of interviews. You go to 200, 100, there's so many different interviews. And as I say, I've got a stack of interviews ready to go and people <laughs> keep messaging me going, Andy, when are they coming out? They're coming out. They're about to go over to the video editor because I want to make sure that, um, yeah, the guests have all the all the video stuff that they can share. That, that, that's really what it's about. But as I'm traveling around, often that gets a little tricky, you know? But we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, what else is going on in my life? Just to, before we jump into today's episode. Lots of cool stuff, to be honest. Enjoying the sun again. I'm definitely enjoying the sun again here in, um, in, the, in Florida. Gotta love this place. Over to Latin America in a few weeks. Just come back from the UK. We've got some other cool countries popping up where I'll be on stage with some really crazy, crazy, amazing, big people. And I'm really pumped about that. So you should be too. And before we jump into today's episode, listen, I got three things to help you. Now, lots of you forwards past this, which is just a shame. 
it's just a shame because you're missing out. You're missing out on so much. First thing I want to share with you is about helping yourself. Not available to everybody. Got to be in the right place. And you might have been getting a little text off one of my concierge um, people. And if you are, then reply to them. Reply to them. We're just checking in. I've noticed that so many people are in the entrepreneur world are hurting right now. Not the people at the top. <laughs> They're definitely not hurting. But everybody else seems to be a little hurting with the chaos, with, with it just, you know the drill. So I asked my concierge person to reach out to you and see where you're at and see if you need a bit of support through this. I um, work with millionaires and billionaires and the systems that I use with them, I just want to share with you. And you know what I mean? I, I really do. Whether we, you are used to being in a hyper performance bubble of kicking ass and for some reason it's dipped, right? You've, the bubble's popped and you just are freaking out a little because of the pressure of the daily stress and you need to perform whether you're in real estate whether you're an e-commerce founder a SaaS founder where you're running a digital brand or you really really just need to get it together because you're doing sales well i'm your man right one of the best in the world to help you reboot and the other thing is you might be business might be about to step into expansion. And you wanna make sure that you're making the right decisions as you step into blue oceans, right? Blue oceans are unknown, they can be scary, and you wanna make sure that you are on point like a professional athlete mentally. And guess what? That's another thing that I can help you with. The other thing that might be happening to you is you could have exited the company. You could be sabotaging yourself in so many different ways. You might have be stepping into the next stage of your life, whatever it is. And that's another way that I can help you. And I can help you in different ways, right? Plain and simple, we do it through a one day, a two day, a 90 day, or a 12 months of working with me. Now the 12 months, that's certainly not for everybody as it takes a lot, of, a lot of work from my side and we have to really love each other. I'm sure I'm going to love you, but you know, and, and then we go on a journey together and we change and expand your life. So my question to you is right now with what's going on, are you retracting or are you expanding? If you're retracting right now, you need that first one right that first one which is the the reboot what you need if you are expanding you either need the option two or three that's it and what we do is i introduce you to the concept of neuroplasticity and behavioral change and we expand you and we retrain that neurological patterns to really behave at a whole different level listen you cannot get to the next stage with the thinking that you have now it is literally impossible. And you might be saying, Andy, I'm kicking ass right now. That's awesome. That's why a world champion athlete brings in a top performance coach to hit that next fine tuning level. And that's why I do. And I want to do it for you. So if you are getting a text coming through, then please answer because, hey, all we do is we jump you in a group and you might be able to chat with me directly through this WhatsApp group or you might be able to talk to one of my team. But either way, we're just here to support you, here to help you. The entrepreneurial world is crazy enough, and I know together we can create massive, massive success. Sound good? Beautiful. So head over to andymurphy.online, hit work with me, and apply there, apply there now. And the other thing you can do is definitely pick up your Mind Control Handbook, which is, it's free right now. You probably should do it because it's not gonna be there much longer. So go and grab your book and so they can let you know all about the absolute neuroscience and the neuro-linguistic programming and the better brain waves and everything else that's required to get your nervous system, brain and peak state in order. And you can also go over to the shop. Um, new things coming in very soon. Um, and I want you to be part of it. So whether you're a trader, we've got the genius trader, whether you are a absolute nerd about this stuff and you wanna take things to the whole different level, it's the most elite training system on the planet. It's called the Eight Figure Thinker University. So you can go and grab either one of those. Top 1% performer is gonna be on there soon and some other awesome goodies. So I want you to go and play, but either way, 
head over to Andy Murphy Online. Make sure you connect with me on social media, especially LinkedIn, as I'm putting out some cool stuff over there. So that's it. Andy Murphy Online. You know where you're at. Go and kick ass. Speaking of kicking ass, <laughs> let's jump into today's episode. And I will see you at the end of the show. Enjoy. What's going on, everybody? So here we are, one percenters, week six. It's going fast, going furious. There has been so much content given to you. So I'm sure your brains are kind of exploding. And be kind on yourself with this, right? Be kind on yourself because just like hitting to the gym, right? It takes time. It takes time to build this muscle. It takes time to build this muscle. And so be kind on yourself, you know? Some days you're gonna have a beautiful high highs, some days can be low. But the truth is, where are we going to? What are we doing? What are we building? And that is what's gonna keep you driving forwards remember this is like learning martial arts right right now we're on maybe a little bit above white belt i've graded you so you've got a nice orange or green belt there but the thing is be kind on yourself because the techniques and tools um take a lifetime to master master okay but that doesn't mean you can't be brilliant at it It doesn't mean you can't be world champion right it just means that it's an ongoing journey so the days you're not at your one percent best it's okay right you just close the book for the day set yourself up the next day get yourself prepared get yourself focused and that's it off you go and every day i want you to do one thing for me that one percent thing very simple it's called just do your best. If you're sad, do your best to be happy. You know, if you're procrastinating because you're overwhelmed, it's okay. Do your best to take action. You know, if you're stressed, do your best to be happy. And if all we're doing is our best to move forward every single day, then guess what's going to happen? That's going to be a compounding effect. The muscle is going to build. And although you might not feel it on the inside, people are going to look at you on the outside and going to go, what's changed, right? And the beautiful thing about the 1% performer is that you're going to go back through it. You just will. Because if you don't, then guess what? That's like doing a 12-week camp in a gym and never, ever going back to the gym. Makes no sense, right? Makes no sense. So we're going to jump in today. Today, we're going to go a little bit technical. And today is also going to go into some cool things, but it might make you realize um, some of the things that we actually play up against in our life. And... um, Let me explain this. I'll go into it because today is what I call week six, visualizing masterclass and your 1% base brain. What the heck does that mean? Well, I'm going to show you in a second, right? So the module for week six, obviously we're going to do our review of metrics. And then we're going to deep dive into something called epigenetics, okay? Now, this is, you're going to go through this, and lots of people on this call are all intelligent. We might have heard this concept before, right, with epigenetics, and that's awesome. But what you're going to discover in this is really how the battle that we have to have um, with changing these genetic expressions. And I, I, will, I will teach you all about that in a second because it's absolutely mind-blowing how much these things affect us. Then we're going to look at something what I call your brain beginning. What this means is we're going to look at where you start to build your baseline patterns. And really, it's an extension of the habits. We're going we're gonna to build on this. But 
We'll get into it all. We'll get into it all. Then we're going to talk about um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs or your human needs, right? You might have heard this concept before and it's powerful. So we're going to integrate that. And then the most beautiful thing about today is we're going to teach you how to start playing and mastering your memories. So this includes all the structure of the memories, the sounds and everything. We're going to show you how detailed the memory actually is. And the most beautiful thing we're going to show you today is how to get rid of, well, one technique of how to get rid of memories or thoughts that keep looping around your brain that you don't want. Okay? Sound good? Because now we're going to jump into something real powerful. Epigenetics. Now, epigenetics have become quite a, a talked about concept, and it's really, it's really interesting um, because science has changed such radically over the years. Like what was known 60, 70 years ago is just not even, it's just not even science anymore, right? Um, even um, Newtonian's law of gravity, again, we talk about quantum physics. Well, the gravity is dependent, right? And it's the theory of relativity, meaning time speeds up depending on your perception. So all of these things are radically different to what we used to believe in science. But the cool thing about epigenetics or DNA in general is that what they used to think is that DNA structure was fixed. What does that mean? Well, that means um, your traits, brown eyes, um, brown hair, all of these things, they used to think it was fixed. But what you know now is the DNA is a little bit malleable and we have things in there which expresses certain different genes, right? So what we're learning about the body, everything changes. What we're learning about inside of us, outside of us, everything keeps flowing and moving, okay? So epigenetics, it's not just genes that make us. So a quick look. In modern science, epigenetics is the term to describe the inheritance by mechanisms other than our DNA sequence of genes, okay? So it works through chemical tags added to chromosomes that, end, that affect genes to switch on and switch off, okay? Just, just go with me and I'll explain more. So epigenetics is the study of changes in the genes which caused um, by changes in the DNA sequence, okay? So epigenetics works by specific mechanisms that literally change the, um, change, yeah, change the actual structure. So what's the difference between genetics and epigenetics, okay? Let me explain. So the difference is a huge amount, okay? Because what we're not saying is that we are changing DNA structure. What we are saying, we are changing the expression of the gene. So this is different, right? And what this means is that it's showing that the gene expression is passed on right into adulthood. And this can massively affect us as we're gonna go into um, a little bit deeper in a second, right? So. Epigenetics is the study of heritable changes in the gene expression that do not involve changes in the underlying DNA sequence, okay? So that's the first thing we understand. It turns, it tells these cells a different story. So with genetics or epigenetics, right, the change is regular and natural occurrence, but it can also be influenced by several factors, including age, the environment, lifestyle, and disease. So remember, your genes are like, there they are, that, that's set. This is, you got all of these traits. But because we're around different environments, this can then express how that gene responds. I'll make sense in it more in a second, I promise. So this can affect um, so much, including, well, yeah, the, the patterns such as diet, 
physical activity, tobacco smoking, alcohol consumption, environmental pollutants, psychological stress, and even working on night shifts because that affects something called our circadian rhythm. So what we've got to understand is what we're trying to do with our body is put ourselves into something called homeostasis. Homeostasis means everything's flowing, everything's good, right? We are balanced. And this is important. Why? Because as high performers, as the 1%, we want to be optimized, okay? And what this is showing is that the brain, okay, our thoughts change this expression. So in biology, okay, so can memory be passed through genes? Okay, let's, let's talk about this because this is a huge thing. If you come from, I don't know where you come from in family, but I come from very working class background, very working class, you know. When I left, when I left school, the, the options were go in the military, go and um, get, be an electrician or go and work in a factory or go and be like, yeah, I don't know, a fireman, <laughs> right? There wasn't many, there wasn't many options. So what happens is, is genetics or the epigenetics, these things are passed right through our lineage. So not just your, your, your parents, but it goes back and back and back and back through history, right? So this affects us. So in biology, memory is present if the state of our biological system depends on its history in addition to its present conditions. What does that mean? If this memory is recorded in the genetic material and st stably um, inherited through cell division, it becomes a genetic memory. So what does that mean? It means if it's constant through our DNA, then this becomes a genetic memory, okay? Or like, I like to call it a ripple, okay? So this is where I'm getting to for everybody. You might find that you get overstressed, okay? Well, I'm here to tell you it's not actually your fault. Because as you can see on the screen then, handling stress is inherited and it's learned. Think about this. So it's genetically inherited and it's learned as a behavior from whoever we were around the most, our parents or who, however we grew up, right? So as a child of stressed out parents, you are less likely to be able to handle stressful situations positively on your own life. Think about that, right? So this is partly through the genes you inherited and partly through your watching your parents react. Think about this. This is the same with money, success, right? Uh, being an entrepreneur, it, 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 you get the idea? So what this is literally showing you is the expression of the gene has a memory. That memory is then being affected, rippling right through. It affects your cells and it literally switches on or expresses the stress gene. And by the way, there is a stress gene okay so think about that in your own life the reason i'm telling you this is this is what what as a one percent performer these are the things that we're going to break okay these are the patterns that we're going to change for your dna's future history it becomes your responsibility to do this that's why you're a top one percent performer so Think about this. Can we inherit trauma? The idea is that trauma can leave a chemical mark on a person's genes, which then is passed down to subsequent generations. This mark doesn't directly damage the gene. There's no mutation. So what it's saying is that it's the expression of the gene. So what it's saying is, <sighs> It's literally, if your parents or grandparents or whoever, whoever, whoever is, had severe trauma and they've passed that on, 
what you might feel inside is like there's damage there and you don't understand why. But this is one of the reasons. I hope this is making sense and I'm not going everywhere with it. Because this leads to the next section. Is anxiety learned or inherited? I wrote a post today about anxiety and it, it's, it's as an entrepreneur, we understand and I've taught you about the boundary, about the amygdala response, about it being an alarm, right? And as we step into outside of the boundary condition of our thinking into the unknown, start on a new project, getting things done, what happens is wah, 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 the alarm goes off, right? And that can create anxiety. But think about it like this. Anxious brains are inherited. Studies find, okay? So the brain function that underlines anxiety and depression is inherited. But there is a still plenty of space for experience in an environment to reduce the risk of a full-blown mental disorder, okay? But the research focuses on, 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 on monkeys around this. Obviously, it's, it's not gone deep into the... Uh, yet the psychology or genetics or neuroscience of humans, but it, it relates, right? So think about that. How are you growing up? Think about that now. What, what were your parents doing? Was there a constant tension in, in the household? Were they arguing? Were they worried about money all the time? Were the conversations about money or, or lack or not just money, maybe, maybe, yeah, just not being world-class, right? Think about that. Because if trauma, stress, and anxiety is passed through our genetic code, we have to be really kind on ourselves. Does this make sense? Because if we're not, then we start to blame ourselves. And what I'm trying to show you here is you can take your power back right? So the tools that I'm giving you, the tools I want to show you, understand that these are tools that we have to apply 24-7, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We have to apply these tools because we just don't know when something can trigger us, a genetic, um, yeah, it might light up, a gene might light up. This is a problem, okay? Is this making sense so far, right? I know I flew through that. But I just wanted to show you how important the understanding is of genes, the gene expression, and how not just learning the behavior, but we're inheriting behaviors, okay? So this was mind-blowing to me. <laughs> this was mind-blowing to me when you look at this. So the awesome thing is, listen very carefully, the awesome thing is, you are going to be the first in your family's history to not only be exceptionally rich and successful, you're going to be the first in your family's history to be able to stop these genetic expressions, okay? And if we wanted to go into a little bit deeper and a little bit more woo-woo, but it's getting science these days, I really believe everything is frequency. And I, I believe in things called, in quantum physics, it's called entanglement. And entanglement means that things are deeply connected to each other. So what I really believe is that you getting a grip of this, learning this, mastering, and becoming the top 1% performer, what it's going to do is even if you don't have kids, it's going to change the energy of your whole family and friends and people around you. So a little bit woo-woo, probably, but I really believe this. So it becomes your responsibility. Think about that, okay? Now, this is where it all begins, okay? Your brain's beginning, okay? So I want you to get your notepad and pen out now because this is really, really cool. And it's really interesting to begin to understand where these all things come from, okay? And you might have heard some of this before. But we have things uh, which are um, de <laughs> developmental periods, okay? So what does that mean? 
It's when our brain is really looking to build a blueprint. And as you can see, there's different stages of this, okay? Now, the first zero to seven, I don't know if you've got kids or you've got nephews or nieces, you're around kids, or you just remember it yourself. But the thing is about this zero to seven and is, is, is so, so crucial. It's so crucial in, you, in, in everyone's developmental. Um, because think about it, right? And I, say, I use the word zero there for a reason zero to seven because what happens when we're in the womb okay what's happening is is our nervous system and neurology is developing so what that means is that if your parents are arguing constantly outside of the womb right so you're in you're all nurtured up you're all comfy right you're all growing and you are a complete blank slate and if your parents are constantly bickering and arguing, what do you, do you think that does to your nervous system immediately, right? What do you think it does to your gene expression immediately? What do you think it does to the neurology or the patterns that are building in your head immediately, right? So what becomes, if we look at your filter system in your brain, what becomes the filter that then you see the world through? Well, if that's constant arguing outside the womb, then what happens is, is you automatically get born thinking that the world is dangerous, right? Right, so you're already in the sympathetic nervous system, your amygdala and everything starting to become heightened, your nervous system starts to, you get the idea, right? And at this point, you are a sponge. You know what little kids are like, right? I mean, we take in nearly 2, 000, 2 million bits of information through our five senses every single second. The kids is double that. So that's why they're constantly like, wow, what the world, right? And the brain is just absorbing and inputting, as it says there, 20 billion synapses are created in this time period, okay? So think about it. What was going on in your life at that point? And then we move from about seven to 14. Remember, it's not exact. It's seven years old. This happened. No, it's roughly around this, right? So seven to 14, it's called the modeling period. And this is huge. So who you are, is largely due to who you have modeled around the age of 10, okay? So again, most kids are looking up to their parents, okay? That's what happens in general, right? They, they trust their parents, they, they look up to the parents. So that means they start to model, as you've learned about modeling in the, the previous week, model the behavior, belief systems, attitudes, values, even language or views and perspective and expectations of the world. And if your parents were nice people, but they sucked at life, then understand what your brain is going. You're pumping this muscle that life sucks, right? I suck. It's also the same what happens is, is someone, a parent with real low self-worth, then guess what that does, teaches the kid? right? Not to be worthy. Now, the kid, the child of 7 to 14 can make a different decision. And that's what I want you to do now is to make a different decision. Because th at that moment in time, guess what can happen? Well, you can decide, nah, screw this. I ain't being like that. I'm going to go in a different way, right? That's what happened to Oprah and all of these other people. So I just want you to pay attention. Who are you kind of being, being around and what was dominant around 10 years old? And then from 14 to 21, we jump into the socialization period, okay? So guess what? Um, I'm gonna go through all mine and tell you all mine in a second, but the socialization period is, is wild, especially because in adults, um, not adults, teenagers, 
males especially, the prefrontal cortex isn't developed. That's the decision making. So that's why the military get people to 18, right? Because they can be brainwashed. It's true. And brainwashing is a real thing, by the way. Indoctrination, um, it's, it's, it's whatever, right? Whatever you want to call it. But that's why, because the prefrontal cortex isn't developed yet, the decision making isn't there, which means you can train people to do certain things. Make sense? So socialization period is a huge thing. If you're hanging around with billionaires at that point, imagine how you'd adopt life. If you're hanging around with people on the street, like I was, guess what happens? Well, guess what? Your brain starts to adapt to that level of person. And it takes a dramatic um, responsibility in our own life to make huge changes. But the cool thing is you are. And the brain adapts as we learn about neuroplasticity, right? So that's 14 to 21. Now, the extra one on that I like to teach is 21 to 35, okay? And that is the business persona, right? And these days, those, I don't believe in those quite those stats. I think it could be a little earlier than 21. It is definitely older than 35, right? Because everyone's living longer, right? Everyone's kicking ass more. So because of that, it's, we're always learning, especially if we're in business. But again, have you, ha, here you model who you relate to in the business arena. So you could relate to the creativity or Silicon Valley thinking of Elon Musk and all of those people. You could relate to Donald Trump, right? In your business persona. You could relate to, you get the idea, right? So, so what's going on there? Because all of these are key areas in your brain and your persona so think about this so now take your notepad and pen and let's have a little look so what i want you to do is if you want to take a big deep breath first then you can but what i want is the first thing that pops in your head okay so what patterns did you pick up from different stages of your life? And I just want you to spend a minute or two just writing down what comes out of your head when you think of the imprint period, or zero to seven, okay? For me, I'll tell you exactly what it was, right? Just to give you, hey, I'm honest and open. For me, constant arguing. That's all I remember in the house was tension and arguing. That's all I remember. I don't even remember. I think I've got one memory of my dad before I was like probably seven years old. And, and oh, that's all I remember. So think about that as a kid. You might be very similar, you know? So just spend it like a, just 30 seconds a minute, just writing down whatever comes up, because it's important. Good. Just spend in that time, what comes up? What memories, what thoughts, what pops up? Remember, we're just becoming consciously aware of what's happening now. And you might be, it might be even interesting in getting some ahas and, right. What's the general emotion, what you can remember? Even if there's no specific memories, what's the general emotion? For me, I just didn't enjoy my childhood at all. <laughs> and there wasn't one bit about it I liked, you know? And there's a lot worse people, I mean, a lot of people had a worse childhood than mine, for sure. But I just didn't enjoy being a kid. So whether it was coming from this stage or this stage, we'll see. But just spend another 30 seconds on the imprints the period, and then we'll move to the model. Okay. Just jumping over when, you, when you're ready. 
to the modeling period. So just take a big deep breath and take you back to your the little version of you. Seven to 14, what's going on? Where are you? Who's around you? What are you reading? What are you watching? Who are you hanging around with? What's going on there? Now, seven to 14 was a little bit better because at nine years old for me, that's where I discovered martial arts. So things changed, you know? I broke my back at nine o'clock, uh, nine o'clock, nine, nine years old doing martial arts, but hey, we were back doing martial arts at 11 years old. <laughs> so the things I watched, just all martial arts. All my heroes were Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Van Damme, superheroes, right? Teachers, martial arts, family members, my dad, martial arts. So everything for me was martial arts. And this is where I started to enjoy or escape from life a bit more. So what was it that really, yeah, affected you? What was going on there? And again, what was the dominant emotion? And the beautiful thing is, you can always press pause and come back to this. But I just want everything to follow now. And if you want to keep flowing, just on the screen there is the next one. 14 to 21. The socialization period. Who were you around in that socialization period, 14 to 21? I'll just put, you know, nerd, the jock, the bad boy, bad girl. What's going on there? You know? Maybe you were into sports. Maybe you were reading books. Maybe you were... Um, what were you doing? 14 to 21. I was also working at <laughs> 14 to 21. So what was it for you? What's that dominant emotion when you think back to 14 to 21 in that socialization period? Who are you wanting to be like? What environment or group were you trying to fit into? And just let it all flow out of you. Because these are the things that we need to really start to pay attention because they answer a lot of, a lot of things. And you'll probably be a little shocked as I, when I go through this, to realize how these early stages really like, um, yeah, put a flavor of who you are. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite shocking. And again, if you want to keep moving, we're on the last one, which is the 21 to 35. You might be in that age range. You might be older than that age range. But this is your business persona. So remember who you aspire to be like. What personality or business people are you connecting to? Now remember, these all change. Well, the 21 to 35, the business personas can change as you evolve. But who are you looking up to? What is it about them that you aspire to be like? Because it's not all the qualities that you want. You just want the good ones. And just spend another minute just putting all that together. And if there's any ahas, remember to just write them in the comments, the chats. There's any little, oh, wow, I didn't even think about that. No wonder I want to fly. I was just reading Batman comics. What, <laughs> what's going on? That Batman doesn't fly. Superman, Superman flies. 
Okay, just starting to wrap that up now. We'll jump on to the, to the next one. Because this is where we start to, the next bit is where we're starting to get into something quite cool. And this is our, well, we're about to go there. <laughs> Okay, let's jump on to the next one. This is where we start to look at um, what I call the 1% needs. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, I'll show you. So 1% needs. So this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you don't know Maslow, do a little Google search. I built the eight-figure thinker training system around this. I'll be building other, other concepts around this, including part of what the 1%, the top 1% performer is. It's, I'm guiding you through these things in my, in my um, sneaky little way. But what's happening, um, you will probably see your own growth. And if you just look, right, so the bottom one is this is psychological needs. Or, yeah, you're breathing food, water, shelter, clothing, sleep, okay? That is your basic essential things, okay? Once you have those sorted, okay, we've got a house, I can do all this. The next level is safety and security. Unfortunately, what most people do is get stuck in the bottom two, bottom two to three, but really the bottom two. So they'll get stuck making sure they've got food and water, and then they'll get safety and security, which is make sure I've got a job, make sure I've got family, make sure I've got social stability, which is an identity, you know? In the UK, they get social stability from going to the pub. <laughs> That's what it is, right? And, the, you, you know, employment, they can talk about their steady job, their family. You get the idea. And their property, right? This is safety and security. The next level is love and belonging, okay? So guess what? As a human being, we need love. If a, a, a newborn baby is not held and give love, it dies. That's a fact. So think about how much we are interconnected as a human species, right? What is the, what is the, um, it, the ultimate punishment in prison? <laughs> yeah, solitary confinement. Why would being on your own be a punishment? But it is. It's because this innate side of us, okay? And then the next stage is we get self-esteem. And this is where ego can kick in, but this is also what we're looking for as a 1% performer. is not ego. We're looking for what? Heart connection, right? So that it then is, is self-esteem. That's confidence, achievement, respect of others, understanding that we are all a human species and we all need support and love and we are all unique in our journey here. So everyone's got a model of the world. What does that mean? It means that we have to respect everyone's version of reality. And as you go back to um, looking at these things, then everyone has such a unique way they, they grew up. So we have to start respecting everybody's yeah, view of the world. So then we move up to something called self-actualization. In the eight figure thinker, the highest level of this is called transcendence, okay? But what this is really about is, well, it's, 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 it's understanding. If, 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 if I hurt you, I feel bad because you're really hurting a part of yourself. And when we can really understand this, this is acceptance, this is creativity, this is intuition, this is being like divinely guided, this is, this is being pulled to do something and everyone else around you might be saying you're crazy because they're in safety and security, but you're all the way up here and they can't understand what's going on. In quantum physics, we call this flat world. What this means is that it's, you can't see the perspective above you, but you can see the world or perspective below you. So it's like we can look at dogs, right? And we can understand the dog's program, 
right? But we can't understand unless we're a billionaire, a billionaire's program. And so that's, the, that's how we, as we evolve and get better and better and better, we have to understand that everyone's just doing the best with the tools that they have and they're evolving on their own, in their own journey. So that's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Okay, crew, there we go. End of episode 420. Hope you enjoyed that one. Yes, it was a little bit deeper, but hey, my, my stuff's generally not for the average public, right? It's definitely not for the average person. It's for superstars like you. It's for people who want more, for people who are driven, for people who are intelligent, for people who are building and wanting to change their life and the world. People who understand the power of the brain, the power of the, themselves, and they want to see what is absolute possible. They want to expand into infinite possibilities. They want to expand into blue oceans. They want to get to the end of their life and look back on this moment and know that you've done something special with it that's what my stuff's for that's what this episode's for and that's why i'm here for you and speaking of being here for you make sure you head over to andymurphy.online remember if you are used to being at the top of your game the pressure of everyday performance has just got too much and that hyper performance bubble has popped and you're just struggling to switch back on and find that fire again, and you need it to happen now, then I'm your man. Head over to andymurphy.online, click on work with me, apply. Let's just have a chat. It can go from a day to two days to 90 days to 12 months. The other thing is, if you are in expansion mode in your business right now, and you're feeling that heat, the pressure's on, and you want to make sure that you're on tip-top form just like a Olympic athlete. You want to make sure that your brain is there, dialed in, your nervous system, the anxiety, the stress, the pressure, well, that's all taken care of. So you can think at such a high level and have those ideas that only you have when you are on your A game. Then guess what you need to do? You need to go to andymurphy.online. Guess where you need to go? Work with me, fill the application in. And if you have sold your company or you're transitioning into the next stage of your business, your life, or you are moving into a new career and you just, you're a little bit confused. You don't know where to go and you need to reamp that, reboot yourself, then I'm your man. Guess where you're going to (laughs) go? Andymurphy.online, work with me. And fill the application form in. Again, let's just have a chat. Let's just have a chat and see if it, this is something that you um, you can do. We've got packages ranging from a couple of grand all the way up to 200 grand, right? And I want to give you what you need to get the result that you want. Also, if you're getting a text message of uh, my concierge person, then that's cool. That's a way to have a little chat with me. She wants to put you into a group with me or uh, one of my, yeah, or the concierge team. And we're going to find out if we can help you. If we can, we can, we can't, we can't. That's even before we jump on a call with you because everything I do is specialized. This is not about just putting you through a course. It's not going to happen. I've got courses. You've just been through a part of it today. And that is something you can purchase. But what I do is specialized concierge service. And that's probably what you need. That's the only way really, truly to get the results that you require. So, and andymurphy.online and go get your free stuff there too. Sound good? Hyped up? Pumped up? Ready to take action? Thought you might. Go do that today and uh, keep kicking ass. Much, much love and I'll see you on the next episode. Oh yep, one more thing. Why don't you smile for me? Thanks so much for listening to today's episode of the Mindset by Design podcast with your host and NLP expert, Andy Murphy. We'll catch you next time.